All right, let's get started with a couple of things. Number one, you might notice something different about me in particular. My camera is now focused. Shout out to Josh. He came over, he fixed my camera, he fixed my green screen. So yeah, moving on. Number two, number two, number two. This will become more and more appealing to you as the video progresses, but I'm selling merch right now. Some of the merch you can buy looks like this. It says DC Dracovish. It's very cool. Buy my merch. I'm unemployed. Support me. Number two. There's more than one kind of merch, okay? You can buy this handy dandy Ban Incineroar merch, which may be interesting to you. All of it will be in the description down below and in the comments section as well. So let's go, let's go ahead and take a little look back. Let's take a walk through memory lane. Hashtag buy my merch. So there I was. Streaming on twitch.tv slash WolfieVGC. It's Thursday. It's just a regular day for me. I have no idea that disaster is about to strike. I have no idea the horror that's about to be unleashed upon me. When I get a message in my chat that I think is a troll, so I don't respond to it immediately, and it says, Incineroar is legal in VGC 2020. And I said, <laughs> oh, Twitch, Twitch viewer, you're so funny. That's so funny, but I'm not going to fall for it. Surely there's no way that Incineroar has become legal in VGC 2020. There's just no way. But then the viewer links a tweet. And here is the beginning of the end. So I click on the tweet and it links me to this. And you can see it here. Number one out of three. A three-part death sentence to VGC 2020. It says, update to the Pokemon VG. Hashtag Pokemon VG. Official competitive rules. Update to the rules. Let's take a look. Let's take a minute and talk about this. There was nothing wrong with the rules, okay? There was nothing wrong with the rules. Why are they updating them? <clears throat> Regional forms that were not available prior to Pokemon Home, for example, Alola Ninetales, are currently not permitted in official competition. You'll be able to lock a battle team containing one of those forms. You'll be able to unable to lock a battle team containing one of those forms. Great! End the tweet here! End it! This is all we needed! And then things get bad because it says until series three. So I'm thinking, okay, well, that's not great. That's not great because, you know, people have spent a lot of time practicing this format, not realizing that they were going to be additions, right? Um, we didn't realize that Alolan Ninetales and maybe Alolan Raichu, but I don't think so. And, you know, Alolan Persian were all going to be legal. Those Pokemon are somewhat good, right? They're not bad Pokemon. Alolan Ninetales in particular and Alolan Persian are both pretty good Pokemon. Um, in their own right, they have some cool things they can do, so maybe adding them is gonna mess up the format a little bit, right? But it's, it could be worse, right? So I wasn't happy about this, and then, then things get bad. However, Pokemon on your team may have any, uh, move or ability obtainable through normal gameplay, including moves and abilities inherited by, a, by an egg from a Pokemon brought to Pokemon Sword and Shield via Pokemon Home. We already knew that. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Where's the, uh, this is the wrong two out of three. I'm sorry, I went down instead of up. Okay, this is, I was like, wait a second, that's good. Okay, two out of three, and here's where things get bad. Series three opens on March 1st. The following Pokemon will become legal, provided they have the Galar symbol, meaning they were caught or bred in Galar. All available regional forms, including Galarian Slowpoke. So we'll be using Galarian Slowpoke on the channel, I'll tell you that much. Number two. Number two. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Rowlet, Litten, Poplio. And their evolutions. More Gigantamax Pokemon. Now, this seems like a relatively innocent tweet. It's not. Here's the problem with this tweet. I'll highlight it for you. This. That's half of it, and the other half is and their evolutions. So, they're adding Incineroar, Mega Blast, or Blastoise, and Venusaur into the game. The other two, just, uh... Decky Dewey? Wow, well, Wolfie said Decky Dewey wrong. It's actually just him. I get it, okay? You don't have to comment about it. I get it. I'm sorry that I know how to pronounce things, okay? <laughs> sorry. And Pre Marina, I think Pre Marina actually has potential, but they've introduced Incineroar, Blastoise, and Venusaur into the metagame. Why? He, that's, just, that's just the only question I have is. Well, it's not the only question. But why? I don't understand. I don't understand this at all from a number of reasons. Number one, why introduce six Pokemon? What is the point of that? What's the point of introducing six Pokemon? Especially Pokemon that, frankly, are really, really polarizing and aren't super well liked. Well, Incineroar specifically. Um, 
Know that events spending multiple days, such as regional championships, blah, blah, will use the same format live on the first day throughout the main tournament. So they don't change rules um, for the whole thing. Okay, so here's the... This is what we really need to care about. So I don't understand why you would introduce Incineroar into a format because this format has been looking like it could be the greatest Pokemon format competitively of all time. For VGC, I know for singles they're having some trouble. But for VGC, it's been looking really, really good. And I don't understand why you would introduce Incineroar into it. So let's talk about why... A lot of people will ask me, Wolf, why do you hate Incineroar so much? Incineroar is the perfect defensive tool. It's the ultimate defensive chess piece, right? And you might think that's good, but it's kind of one of those things where it's so much better than everything else that it makes it like, it makes it very, very, very hard to deal with. So actually, I can go ahead and look up, uh, let's go to VGC stats. Uh, I want to go to, let's see. Uh, I would like to do 2019. Is there a way to look at just 2019? Um... I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go for like let's do just um I don't know. Uh 2019 started on January 1st and went until let's see. It went until blah 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 blah. blah. Let's say August. Oops, August 2019. August 2019, okay. August 30th. Let's look at who has the most CP. Keep in mind that this is uh This is restricted format. So Pokemon such as oh, I think it might not be on here anymore. 2019. Here we go. Sorry. Let's take a look at who has the most CP in 2019. It could be anybody. You think Kyogre? You think Groudon? You think Rayquaza? You think Xerneas? Surely it's Xerneas, right? The most broken Pokemon ever created. Surely! What? Incineroar had over 1.5 times as much CP as Xerneas in a metagame with Xerneas, Groudon, Tepofini, <laughs> Rayquaza, Kyogre? Look at this. Incineroar is so incredibly, incredibly good. Um, why is it good? Intimidate. Intimidate is very... It's For a while, it was considered to be one of the best abilities in the game. It's probably the best, like, commonplace ability. Sure, you have abilities that are, like, one-off on Pokemon, but for of abilities that occur on more than one Pokemon, Intimidate's probably the best, right? Shadow Tag is another one. It's, like, those two, in my opinion, are the best ones. Um, Fake Out. Fake Out is one of the best... The best moves in VGC. It's an incredible, incredible move. And... Incredible defensive typing, good stats, good bulk. AV and Cinerar could live uh, Kyogre Origin Pulse. I'm sure it might even be able to live Water Spout from certain Kyogre, right? Um, it lives Presbyterian Blades thanks to Intimidate. It takes plus two Xerneas Moonblast. These are old calcs, sure. I, I get that, right? But, like, we don't have things stronger than Kyogre this format. We don't have things stronger than plus two Xerneas Moonblast, right? We don't have things stronger than Groudon. Maximus aren't, aren't as powerful um, in general. So... It's very good defensively. It has good defensive stats. It's, it's good stats across the board. Its weakest stat is its speed, which is slow, but you want it to be slow because the last thing about Incineroar is that it gets U-turn. And U-turn allows it to... You can switch into Incineroar, take a hit, eat health back because of your berry, use Fake Out if you want, or you can just U-turn out into something and get it in for free, basically. And because you're slow, you're U-turning most of the time after your opponents are attacking, giving you effectively a free switch, which is very valuable in VGC. Um, and now, not only does it have U-turn, but they gave it... Parting Shot. They gave Incineroar Parting Shot, which is like U-Turn, except instead of doing a little bit of chip damage, which for the most part isn't really that relevant, lowers both attack and special attack by one stage. So you can have, like, a, you can drop something's attack to minus two or something special attack to minus one and then get a free switch in. Additionally, it used to have Low Kick for fighting coverage. Low Kick's not as good anymore. Maybe, you know, maybe Rock types are good Incineroar counters. Maybe your Tyranitar can be uh, Incineroar. Nope, they gave it Close Combat. They gave it close combat. Maybe it doesn't have room for close combat. I don't know. It probably runs fake out, fire, dark, and parting shot. Um, or U-turn if you're assault this. But it's another tool in its arsenal, right? I I really don't like Incineroar. It's been at one world's both of the years that it was legal um, with Intimidate. Uh, and it's just a really polarizing Pokemon. And even though... I don't know. Even though Incineroar, like, obviously, like, it's good to... Like, as a player, I enjoy using it, right? Like, it's good. Um... I, I know that people hate when, you know, there's too much centralization in a format, and I don't want to read, you know, I don't want people disliking my game because everyone everyone's using Incineroar, right? Um, I will say, though, that, that this, I may be being a little bit dramatic here. Like, it's not necessarily all doom and gloom. Actually, Sajin Park made a really interesting tweet about it, say, talking about how he doesn't think Incineroar is going to be as good now as it was back in the day. And I, I'm inclined to agree with him a little bit, so I don't think this is... I don't know, know necessarily how bad it is, but before I tell you why it's not that bad, buy my merch. Buy merch. Look at it. It's so cool. Shout out to Al for helping with the design. Where's the other one? Here it is. Look at it. Tell the world how you really feel. 
Well, these nice pastel subtle shirts, okay? Wear them to events. Or don't, up to you. But I bet they're going to be soft. I don't have one yet. I've ordered one. Um, but anyway... It might not be all doom and gloom, and I'll, then I'll talk about Venusaur and Blastoise. So, but first of all, let's talk about Incineroar. So, Intimidate for the first time in my career, except for 2011, so from 2012 through 2019, Intimidate has felt almost mandatory on a team, right? I used I used Chesto, Rusto, Intimidate, him on top at Worlds 2012. Um, uh, it's it's a very very good ability, and for some reason, this I, and I I can't exactly explain to you why why it feels this way to me it's, and it's just how it feels but for some reason this is the one format for the, for the first time in a long time that intimidate does not feel mandatory and that's a big deal um like i don't and, and the reason intimidate doesn't feel mandatory to, to build on that a little bit is that it doesn't feel as good right it doesn't it doesn't feel mandatory to use because it doesn't feel as weirdly oppressive as it did in the past i think part of that is dynamax i think a large part of that is dynamax to be honest like because you can like, okay, let's say my opponent is an Excadrill and I intimidate them. There's if they Dynamax that Excadrill drill in the same turn, um They're still they're still like getting a 1.5 times boost, so it's as if they weren't intimidated regularly. Um the other thing that I'm worried about though is that maybe Intimidate doesn't feel as good because the users aren't as good, right? We've got Hitmon Top and Scrafty and Gyarados and Arcanine, all fine Pokemon, but not the same level of Pokemon as Incineroar. Um, to be clear, like, Incineroar is a, a several tiers above all of those Pokemon. Even Arcanine. Incineroar totally invalidates Arcanine, in my opinion. Maybe some people will use Arcanine, but for the most part, you have almost no reason to do it over Incineroar. Um, which is a problem. Um, oh, Incineroar is so good against Dragapult, dude. Because it's so bulky. Poor Dragapult. Um, so anyway, Intimidate doesn't feel as good. Fake Out also had a huge nerf because it can't hit Dynamax Pokemon anymore. It's still a good move. It's still a very good move. It's another thing where, like, a lot of, like, you wouldn't run a Pokemon just for Fake Out, like, really, anymore. Um, Grimstone have started running it, but Grimstone have a lot of other things they can do. However, that may also be a case where, like, we just don't have, like, a as good of a tool to use it, right? Like, what, Grimmsnarl or Scrafty or Hitmontop, those are all, like, Scrafty and Hitmontop in particular can be compared to Incineroar because they also have Fake Out and Intimidate, but... They're just not, like, their stats aren't as good, they aren't as threatening offensively, they're not as bulky defensively, they have worse defensive typing, and they don't have U-turn or parting shot to switch out, so, um, I don't think it's that any one of its Incineroar's tools are going to be broken, I think it's the combination of them and make, like, are going to be really good, because sure, can you deal with Intimidate? Sure. Can you deal with Fake Out? Sure. Can you deal with, you know, free switches and parting shots? Sure. But can you do it all in the same Pokemon? That's where I get a little concerned, right? Um, Yeah. And then, U-Turn slash Parting Shot is still really good. Parting Shot's very good against Dynamax Pokemon. Um, yeah. Parting Shot's very good against Dynamax Pokemon. Because if you if you drop on them, it, it becomes very... Um, they become much less threatening, right? If you get an Intimidate or a special or a Snarl drop on a Dynamax Pokemon. Because they have three turns to do as much damage as possible and then go from there. So, it's going to... I I So, okay. What's my final verdict on Incineroar specifically? I do think it's going to have a pretty big impact on the format. I hope that... I, I, I think it's a given that it's going to impact the format in a big way. I hope it doesn't become oppressive. I really hope it doesn't... I really hope it doesn't become oppressive. I'm not positive. I could see it going either way. I could see Incineroar being 75% CPU um, to win usage. I think that means... That's what that means. That's such a high percent. I think that means that... I'm not positive about this, but I think that means that of, out of all teams that are in CP, three-fourths of them had Incineroar, which is a lot, <laughs> to say the least. Or maybe it's that 75% of all CP earned out of possible CP that could have been earned. Was it earned by Incineroar? I don't really know. Um, so, okay. To wrap up the thought, it could be broken. It could be totally broken, right? It could be not as broken as we think. People are gonna... People are hyping it up. People are afraid because it's been very, very present in the last two years of teams. Um, I'm hoping it's the... I'm hoping it's the latter where it's overhyped. I, I, it's definitely gonna be good. It's definitely gonna be a good Pokemon, but I, I hope it's, like... I would. I hope it's not to the point where. I hope it's worse than Togekiss is right now. I hope Togekiss remains better than Incineroar. Um, or I hope Togekiss is better in this format than Incineroar. Like because Togekiss is very good, but it doesn't at the moment. But it doesn't feel oppressive. Like right. Like it's not like you can definitely win without Togekiss on your team. It's just one of the good Pokemon in the format. I would love if Incineroar remained around that level and didn't like blow everything else out of the water. And of course, people will counter it. That's part of having a meta game. I just. I worry that. With Groudon and Xerneas and Kyogre and Mega Rayquaza, you know, not fully countering and like not stopping Incineroar from being this prevalent, I hope that I hope that we have the tools to counter Incineroar. Right? We have Milotic, we have Pissimian, right? Um, 
I hope that's enough. I really do. I really do. I don't want Instant Order to run away with this format. Um, really quickly, I'll also talk about Venusaur and Blastoise, because I think those are the other two relevant additions to this format. Let's talk about Blastoise first. Blastoise is not that big of a deal, but they did give it Shell Smash, so you could very easily do something with, like, with Blastoise with Shell Smash Water Spout. Um, I believe Blastoise still gets Fake Out. I'd have to check that, but I'm pretty sure it still gets Fake Out. Um... Yeah, so I think it's, I don't think Blastoise is going to be oppressive or anything, um, but I, I think it will be good. I think it's a Pokemon people will enjoy using. If you get a Shell Smash off with White Herb and then you Dynamax, you, you can pretty much kill everything, I think. Um, and you get plus two speed as well. So it's a good Pokemon, I think. I don't expect it to be oppressive in the same way that um, I'm worried about Incineroar. So that's all I have to say about Blastoise. But let's talk about Venusaur, because Venusaur is something that I'm worried about. Venusaur is a Chlorophyll user with Weather Ball, with Leaf Storm, with Sleep Powder... They gave another really good move as well that I forgot about. I don't remember what it is. Um, and it's very good. And, and and in my opinion, sleep is one of the more like uh, unhealthy things for a metagame to have to deal with. So I am worried about sleep with um, with Chlorophyll. Because right now our sleep powder users are like Roserade. Vile Plume is not very good. Um, uh, Shinodok who's bad. We have a Yawn, but that's not the same as like other sleep. Butterfree. All, none of those Pokemon are especially good, right? Like... Butterfree is not traditionally thought of as very good. It's a supporting Pokemon, right? It could be abused. Um, Venusaur is high speed stat coupled with Sleep Powder. Sleep, and Sleep being the best Dynamax counter. I hate Sleep Powder in particular because it's so variable, right? Like, it's such a... When you play Sleep Powder, you're just rolling dice most of the time, right? Like, you're just trying to... You know, you're just like, well, I hope... You know, one out of four times this move is going to do nothing and I might lose because of it. Um, so, I don't know. I, I will say, though, that there are certain things that you can do about it, like... Speed changes happening dynamically now are a huge, huge buff against Venusaur, a huge, a huge weakness to uh, to Venusaur, and so I'm hopeful that that will that will help us out here because you know Venusaur's in the field and you have like a, a a relatively fast Pokemon with Max Lightning and you have Tyranitar in the back, you can switch to Tyranitar and make sure Venusaur isn't moving first and then use Max Lightning, right? And you can break Venusaur's Focus Sash. So, um, or you can set Tailwind, right? You can have Whimsicott next to a, a Pokemon faster than Venusaur, like Whimsicott Duraludon, for example, would be a pretty good answer to. Um, at least the sleep powder aspect of Venusaur. So I don't think Venusaur is going to be... I would rather not be playing with Venusaur, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that it's here. Like, I don't, I, it's not as big a deal as Incineroar, but nothing could be as big a deal as Incineroar, unless they added, like, Xerneas or Primal Groudon or something. Um, but I think Incineroar is probably the single biggest thing they could have added. Even Garchomp wouldn't be as big a deal as Incineroar. Um, if, I know that might seem hard to understand if you're not used to VGC, but... I, I really do believe that. Now, I might, I might be wrong, but I really do believe that. Um, so anyway, yeah... I think that's all I have to say about it. I, I'm really worried, frankly. And the other thing, okay, the last thing I'll say is that it, it, it's kind of disrespectful, right? It's kind of, like, in a sense, to the players, right? We had no idea this was coming, you know. And think about the players, like, the European players, for example, whose first event might be the European International Championships, which are happening in April in Berlin, right? Those people may have been practicing for this event, for that event, right? In a format that's not really relevant anymore. It's not the same format, right? Somebody may have been working on a team that they've been, you know, pre preparing for months, and now, like, the whole format is different. And it's one thing to add Incineroar mid-format, right? It's another thing, like, to tell us 15 days before it's going to switch, right? I don't know. I just think... I think that's really insensitive. I think, you know... I, I It's fine if you want to mess up the format, right? Maybe it's fine. Maybe maybe adding Incineroar is going to be a good thing for the format, and this video is going to be, you know, something that's laughed at later. But I think I've cause to be concerned, but fine. Just tell us in advance. Say, hey, this is the format from December... December... January 1st to March 1st has this... From March 1st on, for whatever, it has this, right? It has Incineroar. Just tell us so people know. Or at least, you don't have to tell us what's coming, right? Just tell us, hey, we're going to change something. So at least people are on guard. So at least I'm not streaming and I find out Incineroar is legal, right? It's not that hard to give us a heads up, I think. I mean, maybe maybe, maybe there was a thing in the code and they couldn't stop Incineroar from being legal. Though I'm sh It's not legal right now, so that can't even be the case. So, ugh, anyway... I think that's all I want to say. If you believe in Ban Incineroar, Ban Incineroar, buy my merch. Please buy my merch. Unemployed. Um, buy my merch. Shout out to Josh for fixing my camera. I think that's all I want to say. Hopefully it's fine. I really hope it's fine. I am really worried. It might be fine. It might not be fine. The format's been incredible so far. I just hope that... I hope that it's a neutral change. It would be amazing if it was a positive change. I hope it's a neutral change. And if it's a negative change, I hope it's small. I hope it doesn't, like, ruin everything that we've been working towards. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I think that's all I want to say. I'm very worried about this. For, I think, good reason, given the last two years. So, yeah. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, and buy the merch. Buy the merch. Okay. Buy the merch.